right, welcome back everyone. In this section, we'll be starting off by adding pegs and parenting the nodes. So basically creating what we call a hierarchy inside of our node view right here. So I am going to open up this view a little bit bigger to have access uh, to the full screen version of my node view right here. If you need to have a bigger space, you can do the same by putting your mouse over where the node view is and you press Control F once and then twice to open it up again. Uh, so this is basically giving you access to the full screen version. If you are on Mac, you can do the same using Command F uh, twice, same thing as for PC right here. Okay, so I've got my entire structure here connected in my composites and I want to be able to add pegs to all of those. So I can really zoom out to make sure that I have everything inside of my structure right here. So selecting all of those and to add pegs to every single one of them, I can do control shift P and this will add a little green node on top of each selected node. So I am going to use those to then build up to the master peg, which will control the entire character. So really not so different from what we would find inside of um, a regular rig. So looking at the arm right here, we're only really going to look at half of the character and then you guys can do uh, the other half afterwards. So we've got the hand right here. Um, the hand really doesn't need to have its own peg. So I could use this one to make sure that whatever I end up drawing on the hand top here, uh, which I've mentioned before. So whenever we move the hand, we also move what comes with it. The reason why I'm leaving the peg for this one is that I'll be using that to add Z depth if I want to bring something in front or behind. It's always good to have it in here um, as a backup. So I've got my forearm arm. I've got the two little pieces of hair that we have right here. And these could be grouped up if I want to move them together. So I can create a peg for each of these. Again, we try to, uh, as often as possible, rename those pegs. So if I want, I can name that uh, just on um, There we go. Using master is a good way to uh, just keep everything kind of on the same page. Um, then I want to have the forearm parented with the hand. Here we go. We do not yet have the right pivot points for these, but don't worry about it. We'll set those at a later time. And then I want to have the arm and the forearm. There we go. Parented together. And here we have it arm, forearm, and the hand. We could have the little hairs uh, right here. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell how they're going to be moving. Do we want them to move when the full arm moves? Do we want them to move uh, when the arm moves? I think for this one, I would probably have them follow the arm rather than uh, follow the full arm because they might end up over here and it might be kind of weird um, as we uh, as we keep animating them. So always think in terms of movement. Same thing for the sleeve right here. We're going to attach it to the arm so we can rearrange our connections a little bit just to make it really clear what is going to be following which piece. We have this one here and then moving on to our 
full arm, allowing us to later on um, animate right here the entire thing once we've set our pivot points properly. So I'll let you guys do the same thing for this hand right here. We've got the face starting over here. Let's go back into full screen mode. So we have a few things right here. We've got the eyebrows and here we have our entire front eye. So the pupil we can join together using a peg. So we'll have our pupil front master peg right here. And over here we have the eyelid and the eye. These could be parented together using a peg. And we want, of course, to parent these together using another peg. So that way we can select the entire eye right here. Have to be a little bit creative with the names at times because you cannot have two pegs named the same way. So we've got our full eye for those who are more a bit more visual you can look at what you're doing especially when you have two screens very useful so we have the highlight of the pupil right here the pupil joined together so i'm able to move both of those at the same time we've got the eyelid which is right now just this little piece here don't you worry we'll come up with a little system for that later on we've got the eye is this piece right here and the peg that controls the entire thing so you can do the same thing again for the other eye right now they're perfectly symmetric so you don't need to worry too much about um, about differences in both hierarchies we have the nose here Two pieces for the mouth. I'm actually just going to join these up right now into a single mouth master peg. And as we do the lip sync later on, if we need to split those into multiple pieces, we'll do just that. So we've got the peg that controls the entire mouth. We had it split into a few pieces right here. We have the lower lip. We have the upper lip right here, the little split in the middle, and both of these right here. We'll have additional pieces, notably for the teeth, uh, the mouth interior, the tongue, uh, and so on. But currently, it's not really uh, necessary to, um, to think about that much further. Going a little bit further, so again, left to right, we just keep keeping going. We just keep going. We've got our three little pieces of hair right here. We'll join those up with a single peg. So hair, hair master, not to be confused with a popular series. <laughs> uh, we've got the jaw here cheeks so the cheeks could be joined up if i want to animate these two together create a peg for those create a peg for these and so we've got this side this side and we've got the head as well so if we want what we could do is join up both of these and the jaw and the head to be able to kind of have a global uh, head that, we, uh, that we're going to use. So selecting this one, this one, and this one using control or command. And command P or control P will have our full head. 
right here. So the entire piece, making it that much easier if I need to scale it and skew it a little bit and that sort of thing. All right, so getting into the ears, which we have right here. Uh, these are going to be a little more tricky to, uh, to put together. So let's see, we've got the ear tip, the outside of the ear, the inside hair, and the interior right here. And I even have a little extra piece hidden right here, which we'll be using for when my character turns. Um, so not to worry, you know, even if we forget something, uh, if we realize that we need an extra piece, we can always go back and add that later on as we go. So let's just keep going with this one right here. If you're unsure of what to do when you create your own rig, you can always just start by grouping up the entire pieces right here. And, you know, we'll have that the ear front master right here and then uh, later on if we realize hmm well you know what I might want to move just this one uh, and move it along with this one right here um, but right now I think just having them all as individual pieces might not be a bad thing so we'll just keep that as is for now if we realize that we need to split it into um, further detail then we can do that later on got my other ear right here. Here we've got the neck. The neck is going to be a fun one to parent because it will eventually control the entire head. So we'll go ahead and continue that uh, in just a bit. So you guys can start with the ones that we've done just now and in the next video we'll keep going and parent the rest of the hierarchy.